you already know, my name is Afadi, and the cultural artifact that I don't have is uh, technically soccer or soccer ball. Um, I want to start off by kind of explaining the origin, origins, but he kind of gave the perfect background on it. It's a worldwide sport that everyone has played more than uh, any other sport that's played over here, especially because they played even in the foreign nations uh, with bad infrastructure, because it's just something that we don't actually need that many materials for. You can just talk about an area, and a few more people play with besides yourself. <coughs> um, the reason why I chose this as my cultural artifact is because it's one of the most uh, inspiring things that um, has ever helped me through the toughest time. Um, it's not something I can be credible for because I haven't played all my life. Um, I started once when I was 14, and at AY solely with people usually find like I guess you could say easy or not as competitive. Um, and I live in Auckland, which is not a perfect uh, area. It's kind of like a live bar and, and criminal activity. So my dad um, wanted me to play in a better area, so he played me in a more, I guess you could say, Caucasian area. Um, and it's called North Redondo. And it's usually full of um, um, Caucasian people. And he thought it would be a better environment for me to play because practice was from 7th grade to 9th. So there's no reason why I should be at like 14 in a bad infested area. So when I first uh, tried out for the All-Star team, um, I met a few kids there that were soon to be on my team, and I tried out. And I was the only African American there. Um, little, to, little to know, they thought I was a um, Middle Eastern because of my name. And at that time, I actually had a Middle you know, Eastern picture features. And so <laughs> while we're, uh, and I was like, I was pretty much out of shape at the time. So while we were trying out, the coach told me the one and had that I was gonna make the team because I suited uh, what they needed. But throughout the entire trial, uh, I was <laughs> being made fun of. I was called African slave. I was called Taliban. I was called just uh, a whole bunch of hurtful names. But um, it didn't hurt that much because the same thing was going on in middle school and I was uh, in a class in middle school at the time. And it's kind of the same word apply. So you wouldn't expect that to happen because of the two, the two places that you would think it wouldn't happen actually happened. And it was kind of tough. So um, even though the, after the coach called me I was going to make it, trials for it wasn't over, but I left anyway because I don't want to pick me up carrying me in a bad like in a bad place. So I walked home and it was about five miles home. So I walked home and <coughs> as I walked home, I thought about if I should go to the next trial. Even though I already made the team, or if I should even play on the team in general. Um, the next day, I said I concluded that I'm just going to go. And I went, and I worked harder than everyone else just to prove that I wasn't someone who's going to make the team just because the coach liked me or because I was being made fun of. And I always thought why I didn't bring the coach. And the reason why I didn't bring the coach is because um, I found him oblivious to the fact that just because he didn't, he, even though he was a little, he didn't know how to react to the situation because as far as he never been exposed to, and I was used to it. So I didn't want to make it a matter that I had to be blown up. So I kept it for myself. And as we practiced and went to games, I didn't let it discourage me that the fact that my teammates were going to treat me as equal. So what I did was work harder than everyone else. And I got that from my brother because he's played soccer before and so he trained me every once in a while. And by the end of the 11 game season, I scored 17 goals. The top of the entire league when I destroyed all my players, literally. And there was one time when we had a banquet at the end of the season, and a place where I took a team, it's called Round Table. I remember when we went there, the kid that actually was the worst towards me actually shook my hand or offered his hand to me. And I shook his hand because there's no reason why there's no, like, there's no place for forgiveness. So I shook his hand and said, forget, there's no point why. I shouldn't be a friend or why I shouldn't forgive you and let it go through. So I did and later on in the future, actually after that I stopped playing and then came back um, when I was 17, um, playing in a division called U19 and it was completely different teammates, completely different uh, coach and but the, the team was really bad and the coach recruited the same kid and at that time uh, I was in the worst shape and this kid was actually like, he was a phenomenal player. He was playing with a uh, uh, team right now with, uh, the youth, uh, team. And he was a phenomenal player. He, like, he destroyed me at that time. And I felt bad the fact that 
I reacted to this in a situation I am to let it, my, my perseverance and consistency uh, continue on. So while I felt, I felt discouraged, um, I didn't um, let it ruin me. So um, there was a video I wanted to play. It's by a motivational speaker called Eric Thomas. I don't know if anyone here has heard of him, but he made a video called How Bad He Wanted, multiple videos. And after he made the video, well, one part of the video he said, he was quoting a football player uh, called Emmett Smith, and he said, all men are created equal, some work hard in preseason. And I took that as very inspirational because everyone here is equal, but it's just a matter of how much work you put into the stuff you do. So I work very hard, um, consistently got in shape, and I just had a better work ethic than I usually do now. So I didn't let it affect the way I react to certain situations. And the reason why I didn't feel like coach is because there's always something that we all had that we connect to. So soccer was my escape to reality. So I don't want to let it discourage me or anything I would have to do in the future. So there's a lot of things such as politics that I go into. I have to love my family without the all the that we have. So I let it be the motivation that I have to actually help others.